Well, the first self-testing HIV kit to be approved in Canada has lost its federal funding. It was approved in 2020 and uses a drop of blood to deliver results in about a minute. Federal support came to an end on March 31st. Now, the funding ends as Canada is seeing HIV cases rise. There were more than 1,800 new HIV diagnoses in 2022, a nearly 25% increase from the year before. That's the, the highest rates, that is, are in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Well, joining us now is Sean Rourke. He is a scientist at St. Michael's uh, MAP Centre for Urban Health Solutions who helped pioneer these uh, HIV self-tests in Canada. Th uh, Sean, thanks for coming in. I, I, you know, I first want to get your reaction. Uh, you helped pioneer these tests uh, that you, when you brought in one uh, being distributed. Uh, how are you feeling today? Uh, disappointed. Um, this is a program that's been hugely successful engaging community, reaching the right people. Um, and we have the data, we have the impact stories, the real life stories, reaching people, saving lives. It should continue. Why are these tests so key? And you brought one here. Yeah. You can hold it up. So this is a test, again, there are people who have HIV and don't know it, they're undiagnosed, and some people will just not engage in the healthcare system. And so we need to go to them. This allows us to go to them. We all know this from COVID, right? When we COVID tests, we, we lined up for COVID testing, we went in and finally it was a self-test we could test at home. It's exactly the same thing. But there's hard to reach people, there's people that are, that are underserved that we want to reach and these work to get, get to them. So talk to me about the communities that you're talking about uh, where these tests will really be key. Yeah, so we're working particularly with black communities, indigenous communities, women, um, people who are very unstable housing situations, men who have sex with men, people who use substances, inject drugs. These are the communities that we can reach and we're doing exceptionally well at reaching them. 50% uh, of the people that we're reaching are first time testers. So that's the key number. We're distributing, almost distributed 250,000 of these kits and we want to do more. Can we open this and see what it looks like? Sure. Inside? I mean, because these are pretty simple kits. Uh, and, and while we're doing that, you know, with so much success in the program here, why do you think the federal government canceled it? Well, the, you know, I don't know. Um, but so there's a, a, a reservoir, there's some solutions, you right. prick your finger, you put it in, it takes a minute. It's a highly accurate test. This is a Canadian company, huge success story for Canada. Um, and it, um, it's something that's very simple to, to, do, to, to do. There's a instructions here, you follow it, um, so you can know your status in a couple of minutes. So, okay, so, you know, we're showing how simple this is. One, two, three, there's three yeah. little vials here, the, there's instructions inside, Band-Aid included, and then this is, this is what will tell you whether right. or not you, you are positive or not. Right. So, so again, you know, if this is so simple, if it is helping communities, mm -hmm. why would a program like this be canceled? It doesn't make it, it's a political decision now, I think. I mean, these are, the question is, do we really care about these communities, these people that, I, that we mentioned, that uh, we're reaching them. We're reaching them in very good ways, helping them get connected to care. We're engaging the community-based sector in a way that's, that's, so, that's amazing. This is a huge success story. Um, the funding is going to the people on the front lines. Over three, 375 agencies across the country are helping to make sure that Given tests, just like right now, I'm, yeah. I'm reaching you because you're not coming in for testing. You're getting a test. You can decide you want to do it right here. You want to take it home, and then you'll know your status. You'll be able to access treatment and save your life if you have HIV. Well, and, and, and you know, sometimes there's stigma attached to going into a clinic or something right. like that and getting an HIV test. Is that right. part of it as well? It's exactly part of it. There's yeah. not only stigma, but you know, we, we haven't. Um, been very thoughtful about the other barriers too. There's lots of these words that we talk about, health equity and disparities. We've learned a lot through COVID. We're not translating that into this. There's no reason for the government uh, not to fund this, you know, so it needs to happen. Are there other countries where, where you know, a program like this is funded and, it, and it's working? So there, the US and the UK are other G7 countries that have programs just like ours, yeah. very effective. We would be the first one to stop a, a, a national program that's working. I mean, if you look outside and you think, you know, the WHO is looking to see, you know, monitoring all the countries, it's a success story. Why would you stop it? It doesn't make any sense. The funding is not a lot of money. Yeah. It works. Let's, let's just make this happen. So HIV rates across Canada rose by 25%, which I said in the yeah. intro, in 2022. What's your message to the government this evening? It's to fund this and, uh, and, and to make sure it's there so that we can actually get people tested, get people connected to care that, they, that, that, is, that works for them, and it'll save lives. So this is just, it's not a, it's a very simple decision, and it's something that we really need them to take more seriously and, and, uh, and fund this. 
Okay, Sean Rook, appreciate you coming in today. A pleasure. Thanks for having me. Sean Rook, a scientist at St. Michael's MAP Center for Urban Health Solutions who helped pioneer HIV self-tests in Canada.